By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back to Winters here, the Ice Age Constructed Tournament held right here on Timmy Talks. We have reached the top eight, the quarterfinals. Last week we looked at the top 16 and the week before that we looked at a match played in the group stages. Now if you've missed all that, just check out Timmy Talks and there's a special playlist uh, where you can find all the matches played in this tournament. But today we're going to look at the quarterfinals and the quarterfinals are between Baron Nick and Xandor. Baron Nick is playing a black and red Leshrox Conquest deck. It's basically land destruction. It's pretty nasty. And he is playing against Xander, who's playing with white and black. And he's playing a deck called Chillo the Wisps. And um, it's kind of built around that um, Pestilence card of Ice Age. But more about that later in the deck deck section. Before I start with that, by the way, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks, especially the Chillo the Wisp deck. That deck picture is a work of art by itself. But before I start with that, uh, I would just like to point out that I always use timestamps for my videos in the description below. So if you want to skip this intro, if you want to skip the deck decks, just check out the timestamps, click on the timestamp marked MTG Games, and that will take you straight to the game. So it's kind of really a handy way to choose what part of the videos you want to see and what part of the video you don't want to see. It's all up to you as a viewer, you know, power to the viewer. Um, okay, so before I jump in, one more thing. The description below is also quite handy for the rule set because we uh, we have a few cards that are restricted and one card's also banned. So if you want to see which cards that are, please check the description below. I can already tell you Necropotence is one of them. And we actually have Baron Nick playing with Necropotence today. So, uh, I mean, I'm kind of excited about that, seeing a Necropotence in play at a game. It's uh, That's really been a while. I'm actually happy it's been a while, but now I'm kind of like, ooh. Would be interesting to see it again and, and see how much it impacts the board. Anyway, um, that's it for the introduction. We're now going to start with the deck deck. I'm going to start with the deck of Baronic Black and Red Lashrux Conquest. This is the deck of Baron Nick. So it's called Lashrux Conquest. It's black and it's red and it's actually uh, a land destruction deck, right? We see some of the typical land destruction cards here. We've got four ice quakes, we've got four stone rains. And we also have three, um, I believe they're called Fumaroles. It's a one red, one black, and three to cast for a sorcery that reads pay three life to destroy target creature and target land. So that is a pretty good card. Yes, it's five. Yes, it's going to cost you some life. And yes, it's a sorcery. So there are a few things against it, but it's also a perfect two for one. And I think with this type of deck, what you're trying to do is just get your land destruction out as fast as possible so that you're always lands ahead of your opponent. So five mana may seem like much, but if you're combining it with Ice Quake and Stone Rain, he's playing with eight, like full play sets of both of those cards. And then also your Fumarole on top of that, you can end destroy a land and destroy a creature if you can finally get some cheap creature uh, on the board. Talking about that, he also plays with a lot of creature removal, soul burns, incinerates, lava burst, you know, of course, lava burst and, and soul burn are also win cons, I guess. So, I mean, this is just a very strong deck because he can destroy creatures and he can destroy lands and both of it he can do really really well in this color combination now there is a card i want to discuss here which is jester's cap it's just such a cool card um it's a card that's been restricted for this tournament with the main reason of that being it is an online match so it's kind of difficult to play online um the nice thing is within the timmy talks community we're all pretty relaxed right i think if you're worried about cheating or stuff like that then i guess a card like this is going to be really difficult to play but if you're kind of mellow and realizing that we're all playing old school magic for the fun and love of the game in the earliest days of its creation then it's all cool i just want to point that out um let's just look at jester's cap for a moment what a beautiful card i remember this was the chase card together with jester's mask when ice age came out people were just blown away by the power of this card so it's an artifact for four two and tap and sacrifice jester's cap to look through target player's library and remove any three of those cards from the game, reshuffle that library afterwards. And this card could actually be quite relevant uh, because Xander, the deck we're going to check out later, is kind of playing a certain combo in his deck that you may want to prevent and that you can prevent when you get an early Jester's Cap activation. Now, obviously, it's only a one-off 
in the entire deck. So, um, you know, Baron Nick has to be lucky to find it. But if he does, and if he finds it at the right time, I think it's going to be really interesting. Now, he's also playing with a card called Conquest, which I think is super cool because you can use Conquest to steal a land of your opponent. So, I mean, he destroys all the lands of his opponent. And then that one land that may survive, he can actually steal it. Talking about stealing, he's also playing with a card that I like a lot just because of the art. Orcish Squatters, one, red, and four. First of all, it's just such a funny name, right? They're squatting your land, it's just hilarious. It's a two, three creature for five mana, right? It's summon Orcs, uh, art by Richard Kane Ferguson. And what it does is if Orcish Squatters attacks and is not blocked, you may gain control of target land controlled by defending player. If you do so, Orcish Squatters deals no damage in combat this turn. Lose control of that land if Orcish Squatters leaves play or if you lose control of the Squatters. In other words, you don't have to keep the Squatters tapped so one Orcish Squatters can steal multiple lands. I mean, that's just, I find it hilarious. I hope to see that side of Baron Nick's deck, you know, the side of Jester's Cap, Orcish Squatters, Conquer. Um, I am a little bit worried though because I think his deck is mainly going to be him just destroying lands and kind of taking over over the board. But yeah, I hope the game will stretch out to be a little bit longer and we get to see the Orcish Quarters and the Conquests and the Jester's Cap and maybe we're going to see um, Necropotence in action as well. Actually talking about that, we haven't discussed what Necropotence does. I can imagine if you haven't seen the card in a while, so just let's really quickly go through that card. Three black for an enchantment, stunning art by Mark Tedden. What it does, it reads, skip your draw step. Whenever you discard a card, exile that card from your graveyard, right? So you've got, there's no way of getting cards from your hand into the graveyard. And then it says, pay one life. Exile the top card of your library face down. Put that card into your hand at the beginning of your next end step. And the sick thing here is you can do it as often as you want. It's just insane. So life or cards. And as a matter of fact, only one measly life. I mean, we all know Sylvan Library, but there at least you have to pay four life per card. And it's also limited to two cards during your draw step. We all know Book of Rest. At least there you also have to pay... Uh, two life instead of one life and the book itself is very costly to get on the board but this necropotence i mean one dark ritual you've got necropotence on the board what a sick card anyway this is the deck of baronic it looks mighty powerful not surprised to see this reach the quarterfinals now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent xandor Chillo the Wisps, that's the other deck in the match today and it's piloted by Xandor and what a beautiful, beautiful deck picture. But besides it having a beautiful deck picture, it's also a beautiful deck with a thought behind it and that thought all starts, I guess, with the card Withering Wisps. So it's two black and one to cast for an enchantment, beautiful art by Nene Thomas and it reads, at the end of any turn, if there are no creatures in play, bury Withering Wisps. Pay one black, Withering Wisps deals one damage to each creature and each player. Hey, this really reminds you of Pestilence, doesn't it? Um, but look, there's an extra line of text. You cannot spend more than one than black in this way each turn than the number of snow-covered swamps you've got in play. Now, that's not a big problem for Xander because all of his swamps are snow-covered swamps. And um, actually, he also plays with snow-covered plains as well. So I don't think that's going to be a big problem for Xander here to get enough swamps for the Withering Wisps. And of course, the problem here is if you use the Wisps, you can kill all the creatures on the board, but you also kill your own creatures. And when there are no creatures left, the Wisp dies. And in this format, of course, you don't have Mishra's Factory to do that, those factory tricks. But what you do have is this card, Order of the White Shield, kind of the Bump Knight of Ice Age. Beautiful art, too white to cast for a 2-1 creature that has protection from black. And that's, of course, very, very important here because that means that all the damage dealt by the Wisps um, does not affect the Order of the White Shield because it comes from a black source. Now, he's also playing with two Circle of Protections Black Main, which is quite interesting, right? So he can also prevent the damage from the Wisps. So what's really important here for Xander is just to get kind of that damage engine going and then he's going to be fine. The problem here is though that it's going to be hard for him to keep the Order of the White Shield alive because he's facing a lot of red burn on the side of Baron Nick. But if he succeeds, I mean, then it's looking really, really good for him. He's also playing with some more ways to deal damage. The Gangrenous Zombies, I think it's such a cool card too. Black and one to cast for a 2-2 Zombies that reads, tap and sacrifice the Zombies to have it deal one damage to each creature and player. And here it comes, if you control any snow-covered swamps, 
The zombies instead deals two damage to each creature and each player. So that's even nicer. Um, he's also playing with a really cool wall, by the way, because this wall has power and toughness equal to the amount of snow covered land you have in place. So not necessarily the snow covered swamps, but all the snow covered lands that you have in place. So all his planes are also snow covered. And then when we're looking at the rest of the deck, I think the Elkin Bottle is a very good inclusion here because when you're kind of looking for those combo pieces, I guess Elk and Bottle can really help you. I also like the Abyssal Specters. They're just really good. If you can get them to stick and, you know, you can start taking cards out of the hand of your opponent and you can get some card advantage. And we all know in Magic that card advantage usually means that you're going to win the game. Um, there's just one zero and Orb. Maybe you're wondering why not play with two or three. They're actually restricted. I do think they can do some great work in this deck because this is really a control deck. So you want to have more time and Zur and Orb gives you more time because life basically is more time and more turns. And then you can cash in on those turns by taking over the game. Now, um, obviously we do see the Disenchants, the Swords, you know, you're playing with white. So of course you're gonna, gonna use those. We also see four IC Manipulators. So that's quite a lot. And I think the IC if he can manage it to stick, could be super annoying for Baron Nick because Baron is hardly playing with any artifact removal. So those ICs could be really, really strong in this matchup. Problem is they're costing four quite costly. Can he get them on the board in time? I think the Dark Rituals, um, oh, he's actually not playing with any Dark Rituals. Sorry, I'm mixing up the two decks because I wanted to say Dark Ritual could be good against Land Destruction, but there's no Dark Ritual in the deck of Xandor. Okay, this is his deck. We've seen the deck of Baronic. That means we're ready. Let's jump into the quarterfinals of the Winters here Ice Age Constructed Tournament. Game number one of the quarterfinals. Here we go. Baronic on the plane sitting on the left. So he's playing Red Black Land Destruction on the right. We've got Xandor white and black with the withering wisps plan beautiful play met by xander by the way and he's playing his second swamp and passing turn so both players not doing too much i am expecting some land destruction here here you go stone rain remember baron's playing a full play set of stone rains a full play set of ice quakes there's a second swamp and a pass and i think this land destruction obviously is really going to slow xander down and it's up for baron to and destroy some lands exactly and get some pressure on the board so there we see one of those pump knights protection from white which is pretty good against xander because it means he cannot sorts it there we see another swamp and a pass let's see what baron can do here five mana an abyssal specter would be good as well and of course some extra land destruction he's gonna attack he can pump up the knight that's what he does dealing four points of damage to Xander, he's going to drop to 16, but I think Xander is happy here that there's no land destruction because now he can go up to four mana. Let's see what he can do with four mana. So there is a Plains and there's a Soul Burn. That's actually pretty effective. Soul Burn on that Knight. So he's going to gain one life, but more importantly, that Knight is gone. So there's no more pressure. He's on 17. He's got quite some lands considering he's playing against a land destruction deck. I'm a little bit surprised that there are no more Ice Quakes and Stone Rains. Baron actually doing nothing, just passing. This is great for Xandor. I can feel there's an opening here. There's an Abyssal Spectre. Are we going to see an Incinerate or a Lava Burst? He's tapping quite a lot. Oh, and here we see the Fumarol that we talked about. So that destroys a land and a creature. It's such a good card. It also means that Baron is going to take three points of damage. So he's going to drop to 17 first points of damage for him, I think. Unfortunately, the dice are a little bit too much on the left side of his screen, but I'll try to keep you up to date on the life totals. Ooh, this is like the Mind Twist of Ice Age. That is so nasty. Discarding the entire hand here of Xander. The hand is actually not that impressive, although those lands are really important for Xander because he's playing against land destruction. He's going up to six lands, so he's top decking. There we see a Jester's Mask. Sorry, Jester's Cap, of course, and he's probably going to take out the Whispering Wisps and the COP Blacks. Look at that. And this, these are the cards that he's going to remove. Now, these players have played against each other in the group stages, so they really know each other's decks. And uh, yeah, this really helps. So both players know each other pretty good. There we see Xander shuffling up. So this match... At a certain point, it looked quite good for Xander. You know, the point that he had enough lands, he got the Abyssal Spectre on, but then it kind of turned south on him with that Mind Twist and this Jester's uh, Cap. Sorry, just yeah, Jester's Cap. I keep mixing up the two. But this is the Cap. The Masks changes the hand. Also a very cool card. 
And there he's all going to put it back together. And a pass. Or actually, Baron is going to pass. There we see the zombies. 2-2 two, two zombie, and he can sack it to deal 2 damage to each creature and each player. There we see an Ice Quake. So he can kind of see the land destruction plan not being as strong anymore when you when you reach the point that there are just more than like four or five lands on board. Of course, Baron has so much land destruction that it could eventually become relevant again. And okay, he's gonna... There was a card on top by accident, I guess, so he's just gonna reshuffle here. <clears throat> so reshuffling the cards. There's an attack for two, so he's going to drop to 13 now, I believe. Two cards in hand for Baron. Sorry, for uh, for Xandor. Three cards in hand for Baron. Playing out of planes, attacking for two again, and there we see an Incinerate. So that is a goner, but another zombie. Another Incinerate, though. So there are the answers from Baronic. And now no cards in hand for Xandor and only one card in hand for Baron. So I guess... Both of these players are just top decking. This is pretty good Zurn Orb. Ooh, and I made a mistake there. Xander still has cards in hand, of course. And now he's playing an Elken Bottle. I think this Elken Bottle can be really, really good. It's kind of these cards that can get you through a dead point in the game because they allow you to draw. So the Elken Bottle, tap three, and then put a card under the Elken Bottle, and you can play it until your next upkeep. In this case, it was a land. So there we see some more land destruction and some more damage for Xander. So he's going down to 17. Oh, wait a minute. He plays the Ice Quake. He was on 16. In response, he's going to sack it to Zurinorp. Oh, that's quite nice. So Zurinorp, I didn't make that connection yet. Zurinorp, of course, really good against land destruction. Because, you know, in response to any land destruction, you can just use your Zurinorp and gain some life out of your land. So that's actually pretty good. Very annoying for Baron Nick here. And finding another Elkin bottle, playing that out, and finding another land. And remember, Baron Nick hardly has any artifact destruction, so those artifacts are there to stay, and things are kind of looking up for Xandor. I believe Baron is on 13, if I'm not mistaken. There we see more cards being played. He can actually use the Elken Bottle again. It could be kind of risky, though, because if it's a card that he cannot play out, it's going to be removed, because you can only play it out during until your next upkeep. Look at that, he's using the Swamps. That is a land. He's already played a land for turn, so he cannot do anything with that. There is a Shatter. Is he going to play a Shatter, I think, on the Zurn Orb, right? Or is he going to do it on one of the two Elken Bottles? It's quite an interesting decision that he has to make here. The Tin Man has to choose a target. This is a tough one. I mean, and this is difficult for Xander too, because remember, he lost the Withering Wisps in his deck. That's basically what his deck is all about. He's lost those to Jester's Cap. Obviously, he's got creatures. He can win it in a different way. And uh, and here we see, so he targeted the Zurn Orb with the Shatter. Finding a Knight, the Pump Knight. 2-1, protection from white. We saw that earlier on the side of Baron. And he's got some swamps. He can actually pump it up to a five-powered creature. There we see an Abyssal Spectre. And actually, that Abyssal Spectre, it's good, but it's not such a big problem for Xander because he's, you know, he's got no cards in hand anyway. So he's attacking first. I'm just expecting Baron to take the damage here. I wonder if he's going to pump it up here. Oh, this card. Oh, yeah. What this card does, you can pay life. And equal to the life you pay, uh, you can deal X damage to all the to any creature. So not to a player, but to creature. So he's using it here to kill the knights. Very, very good card. There we see Xander using the Elken Bottle, finding the, um, the wall. So this wall is power toughness equal to the amount of snow-covered lands. It's called Drift of the Dead or something? I think I could make a mistake, but this wall is huge. Unfortunately for Xander, it doesn't have flying. And I guess Xander still had cards in hand there. It's kind of hard to follow these things. That that wall is now an 8-8. There we see another Elkin Bottle activation. Yeah, this is the uh, the Lemur. So it's a 3-4. You can pay 0, give it uh, minus 0, minus 1, and then it gains flying. 
So it, it, it's basically a 3-3 three, three flyer, which is good because it's big enough to block the Abyssal Spectre. And I guess when you're Xander, you want to attack as well. You want to deal more damage. And tapping three Elkin Bottle, finding more creatures. Those Elkin Bottles are really helping Xander here to find what he needs. Giving it flying and attacking here with 3-3. Three, three. Baron taking in more damage. We cannot see the dice anymore, but I believe he's on 9 at the moment. I'm going to try to keep track of this. There are the zombies coming into play. 2-2 two, two zombie. Ooh, Zurn Orp. This is so tough for Xander. This is super annoying. Remember, he lost two disenchants earlier to that Ice Age Mind Twist. And this Zurn Orp is a huge problem because it's, it, it means so much life for Baron here. Xander still has one disenchant in his deck. Place with three main, two already got uh, discarded because of that mind twist. So he can activate the, the, um, the zombies here to deal two points of damage to everything. So that would mean the knight would die, but the abyssal spectre wouldn't because it has three toughness. Looks like he's first going to attack. So that order of the white shield is unblockable because it's got protection from black. So that's pretty nice. And ooh, finding another Lemur. Those, those cards are quite good. So, I mean, the Elkin Bottles are really doing it here for Xandor. So it, it, it's just a Zurn Orb here that's basically keeping Baron Nick alive. And unfortunately, we don't really have the life totals because the dice of Baron Nick are on the left side. They're out of our screen, which is super annoying. But I believe he's somewhere on, on seven or six. The most important thing here is that when is he going to sack some land? So there we see an attack. Remember, he can give those Lemurs flying. And look at that. He's starting to sack lands here to stay alive. So that is a very good sign. I think eventually... Oh, Howl from Beyond! Oh, ho, ho, a big Howl from Beyond. Dealing even more points of damage. Okay, there we kind of see the dice coming back again. He has to start sacking some life. So now he's on one. But, I mean, he's not going to last. I mean, it's a nice strategy, you know, trying to stay alive with Zuran Orp. It's a great card, but you need to have light at the end of the dark tunnel. At this point, for Baron Nick, it's only a dark tunnel. And, I mean, he's, he's simply not going to last. We're going to see another attack here. I think those Elkin bottles are really what kind of pushed it in the favor of Xander here. I mean, card advantage is such a big thing. It really helps Xander putting threat after threat on the table. Remember, you don't have a balance in the Ice Age only format because that could be one of the cards that can save Baron Nick here. A card similar to balance. There we see a tap of the Abyssal Spectre. So he's going to swing in for... Oh, he's going to deal two damage to everything. So he's got a second under land to stay alive. He's going to lose the Knight. He's going to attack here for eight points. He's going to sack. That's it. He can only sack for six. Take eight. He wasn't one. Damn. Done. Okay, game number one, a win here for Xandor. And wow, this was an interesting first game because there were moments where I thought, okay, now Baron has it, now Xander has it, now Baron has it, now Xander has it. And like I said, for me, the turning point were the Elkin bottles that really helped Xander to keep drawing the threats. Okay, both players are gonna shuffle up and uh, yeah, let's continue to game number two. Game number two, here we go. So there's some shuffling going on. Really like the see-through um, sleeves here of Baron Nick, by the way. Very old school. Love it. Penny sleeves. There he's going to dig through his cards. Draw a fresh seven. Um, and he gets to start. Ooh, look at that. Taking a mulligan. That was... I think I saw the card. Man. And only one mountain. So, I mean, it's a good decision. But the rest of the hand was really good, though. That's what often happens, right, with mulligans. Because you don't have a lot of land, you're like, oh, the hand looks so good. But if you can't play it out, there's no uh, there's no reason to keep it. So this is definitely a good mull by Baron Nick. going to get seven again. Has to put one on the bottom. London mulligan rules. Oh, two on the bottom. This was his second mull. Oh, ouch. Starting with five. Remember, if Xander wins this, he's going moving on to the semifinals here. Baron needs to win this one. There we see, is it called a Pit Trap, I believe? There's a Stone Rain. So Pit Trap is an artifact. Um, you can sack it to kill an attacking creature uh, without flying. 
There we see an abyssal specter. Abyssal specter has flying, so that trap is not going to work on the specter, unfortunately for Xandor. I believe he's only playing with a one-off. So that abyssal specter is actually really, really good. There's no white source for Xandor here. I mean, if Xandor would have had, and he's got six in hand, would have had a, um, a source. That would have been really, really good for Xander. The positive thing, though, is that Xander gets to choose what he wants to discard. With the Abyssal Spectre, um, the opponent can choose. And that's why it's really, really worse than Hypnotic Spectre. And Hypnotic Spectre is a random effect. So here he's discarding the Soul Burn. Finding another Swamp. Tapping four. Playing an Icy Manipulator. And passing turn. So that IC is actually pretty good. Like it can help Sander tapping down the Abyssal Spectre so that he can kind of keep his hand. But he's already lost two cards now to the, to the uh, Abyssal Spectre. And th the cool thing here is in a way it's kind of fair because Baron had to, you know, mold down two cards. So now they're kind of even when it comes to that. And still no white mana for Xandor. Another IC manipulator. These ICs, remember I said it in the deck deck, they're really, really good against Baron because I believe Baron only plays one Shatter main. Then again, for Baron, it's it's not the worst having a standstill situation because he's just going to try to find... Ooh, there's that wall again. So that wall is now a 6-6. Six, six, but it's just a wall. So the question here is... Yeah, he's going to tap down another Swamp Xander because he has that one Icy open, which is a good decision because Baron needs two Ice Quakes to cast... Um, sort of two Swamps, sorry, to cast Ice Quake and two Swamps just to cast Abyssal, more Abyssal Spectre. So that's a good decision. There are more of those walls. And I guess right now, I guess I would tap down the mountain, perhaps. I would definitely tap down one of the lands. Okay, tapping down the swamp. Finding more lands, even. I mean, again, Baron is not really finding a lot of land destruction. I'm surprised. Remember, he's playing four ice quakes. Four stone rains. Oh, there we see a conquer. So he's going to take over one of the lands. That's pretty funny. He's going to take over a swamp. That is pretty cool. I love that card, conquer. A little bit out of the screen, unfortunately, though. But we know it's a conquer. He's stolen one of the swamps. He's going to attack again. He's got to be tapped down, of course. Both players are again kind of in top decking mode, trying to find a way to break the standstill. There again to tap down for the Spectre. And like I said, I'm surprised that Baron is not finding any more land removal. Four Stone Rains, four Ice Quakes, three Fumaroles. You would kind of expect him to destroy some more lands here, but it's not happening. And look at the amounts of lands on the side of Xander, which is great for when he draws into his Withering Wisps. And those Withering Wisps go so well with his uh, walls there that have power toughness equal to the Snow Covered Lands. There we see an Orcish Squatters played by Baron, so he can use that to take over Lance. Only one card in hand for Xandor. Xandor is really waiting for his key card of the deck, Withering Wisps, so that he can start winning this game. And this is just going to be a tough one for Baron because he's facing those two Icy's. Remember, Baron can of course also win on just a huge burn spell, but he doesn't have a lot of land at the moment. To do that, that is, because, I mean, Xandor's life total is so high still, still on 16. We do see we knight here in the past turn. Yeah, I think that helps Baron putting the Conquer there with your Swamp, so we can clearly see it's just another Swamp. It's the Stolen Swamp from Xandor. And uh, there we also see a knight on the side of Xandor. And, okay, he's finally finding an Ice Quake. Destroying one of the lands of Xandor and dealing a damage. And passing turn. I, I think there's a little opening here, potentially, for the knight. He could tap down the knight of, um, of Baron. Exactly. And then he can attack. Orcish Quarters is, I believe, three toughness, if I'm not mistaken. So he can just pump the knight big enough, give it first strike to kill the Squatters. So I'm expecting him here to take some damage. So it looks like he's taking three points of damage. I believe those are the first point of damage. I'm going to try to keep track of his life total again. So that means he's on 17. 
Because again, we don't really see the dice of, of Baron here, which makes it a little bit difficult. And he's stepping down to Spectre, Xandor that is. Makes sense, another knight, so more pressure on the board from Baron. And a pass turn. So Baron here is still working, trying to find his way through Xandor's defenses. It's going to be really, really tough. Remember, he also has those two walls there. They're huge because um, their, their power and toughness are equal to the number of snow-covered lands that Xandor has. And he's got a lot. I think if Xandor finds a Withering Wisps, he's got this game. And he will advance to the semifinals, which is huge. There are even more lands. Two cards in hand. Looking at his hand again, tapping five, it seems. Tapping, are we going to see? Yep, there is the flyer again. So this is a 3 4 4 0 man. I can give it flying, and it does get minus 0 minus 1. So it turns into a 3 3. This is the opening that Xander needs to start dealing some more damage here. Remember, he's only dealt three damage as far as I know. And oh, there's a fumarole. Probably taking care of that flyer and taking care of a land. It does mean three more points of damage. For, for Baron here, so he's going to drop to 14. And this was really important for, for Baron. I mean, if Xander could just find, for example, one of his Elkin bottles, that would really help him. And it's also pretty tough for Baron. I mean, his hand is pretty full. I believe he's got five or even six cards in there. Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual. Are we going to see a huge soul burn here? Are we going to see a huge soul burn? Okay, that is a soul burn for how much? Six. It's for eight, I believe. So that means eight life gained by Baron. So he'll go up to 22. It also means, of course, 8 damage for Xander, which is huge, right? He's going to drop down to 7, I believe. I guess he hasn't adjusted his life total. It's still on 15 there, but trust me, he's on 7 here. If I'm correct with the soul burn, if it was a soul burn for 8, maybe it was lower or more. It was kind of hard to see. Hopefully, he'll adjust his life total. And it looks like he's in the tank here trying to think what to do because all of a sudden the game is slipping away from him. I mean, if Baron has won, for example, a Lava Burst, he can take this next turn. I mean, if you're Xandor, you're kind of hoping for a Zern Orb here. And remember that, that, you know, the life of Baron is now 20 plus. So even if he starts to play more aggressively, it's going to be a really tough... Tough one here for for um, for Xander. So he's tapping down probably the knights here to kind of create an opening. He's gonna attack. I'm expecting a chump here. Yeah, there's a chump by the squatters. So squatters a goner, and that is also kind of indicating that Baron probably has direct damage in hand. Untapping. Okay, now Xander adjusted life. There we see. There is the lava burst. That's it. That's it. I guess, uh, look at the life total. He was on six. So I guess that, that was a soul burn for one more than, than eight. It was a soul burn for nine. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, he's now dead. And uh, that's what happened. And that's so difficult when you're playing against a deck that has multiple weapons. Burn is always difficult. And if the game takes longer, your opponent will have more lands and the burn spells become stronger. Soul burn, a lava burst, all those spells become more powerful. Anyway, it is 1-1 and I'm happy because it means we get to see game number three. Who will advance to the semi-finals? Game number three, the last game here in the quarterfinals. Whoever's going to win this one will advance to the final four, the semi-finals of the Ice Age Constructed Tournament Winters here. And I mean... That is just going to be huge. 46 players started this. Now, only after this match, only four will remain. And Xander here shuffling up, so perhaps he took a mulligan. 
And, uh, you know, Baron Nick, he's on the draw. I think if Baron can find the land removal, which he hasn't really found that effectively in these first two games, then he's definitely a favorite because Xander needs mana. Yeah, there we see Xander putting a card on the bottom. But if not, and Xander can finally cast his Withering Wisps, because remember, he hasn't used that card at all so far in this match, then, uh, then he can definitely take this one. There we see a Swamp and a Pass. So both players just playing out their basics and passing turn. Your slow start for both of them. There's Xander. Will we see some creature? Ooh, Elkin Bottle. That is pretty good. He won game two basically on the Elkin Bottle. There's some land removal from Baron. You would really expect that at turn three. There are the zombies. Two, two zombies. So some pressure on the board here. Are we going to see more land removal? Oh, there's a Shatter on the Elkin Bottle. That is really good. Remember, he only plays with one Shatter though. So that shatter is now, now gone. It looks like Sander cannot find... Okay, he can find another land. That's quite important for him here, passing turn. The question is, are we going to see more land removal from Baron? I'm, I'm, I'm still surprised that he's not finding that much land removal here. There we see a dark ritual. Ooh, and there is more land removal. Destroying the zombies and a land. That card is just so good. Remember, he has to use his Dark Ritual for it as well. So it's basically a two for two. There we see more zombies hitting the board. Are we going to see an Incinerate or are we going to see some more land removal? An Abyssal Spectre could be an option as well for Baron here. There is a Stone Rain taking care of the Black Mana. There is an attack. So he's going to drop to 18 here. There's a COP Black. Tapping three, there is more land removal. This is really what I actually expected in two games prior to see this kind of play from Baron Nick. There's another attack with the zombies. He's dropping to 16. There we see an Ice Quake. That also means a damage here because Ice Quake deals one damage if it destroys a snow-covered land. There's another attack. So Baron dropping to 14 here. If he can just find an Incinerate... Oh, this is good too. Look at this again. A two for one. That Fumarole is such a good card. It does mean three more damage for the Baron. So he's going to drop to 11, I believe. But now Baron has control. This is what he wants. So he just now has to find, for example, an Abyssal Spectre to start emptying the hand here of Xandor. There we see another Ice Quake. I mean, this is looking so good for Baron. This is what Baron wants to do. All he needs now is just put some pressure on the board. And if he can't find any pressure, he can just win by a Lava Burst or a huge Soul Burn, as we saw in, in game number two. There are more, more mana for him, so those spells get more powerful as the game takes longer. And this is just really tough for Xander here. I guess the COP Black protects him from Soul Burn, by the way, so that's something. It also protects him from Abyssal Spectre. But remember, he only has one land. So there is a Knight. So that has protection from white, but the, but the COP doesn't target it. It targets the damage, so it still works against the Knight. There is a discard, so he's going to swing in. He's going to prevent the damage. There we see Dark Ritual and a huge Soul Burn here. So that's a Soul Burn for 4-7, I believe. If I'm not mistaken. It also means, again, life gain for Baron, who's going, going up to 18. Oh, he's actually up to 12. I guess I missed some damage there. But it also means... There's another Soul Burn. Oh, this game's going really fast. More Soul Burns. So he's now up to 17, but more importantly, what's the life total of Xander? We can't see. He's not keeping track of it, unfortunately. He must be somewhere at around 9. There is a Mind Twist taking care of the entire hand here. Look at that. All the cards are gone. This has to be a win for Baronic. I mean, I, oh, I guess he gets to keep one card, deciding to keep the Disenchant. That makes sense. And there we see 
Xander correcting his life total. So he's on five right now. There's the attack. So he's going to use CLP Black. Are we going to see a Lava Burst? There's an Abyssal Spectre. There's an Orcish Squatters as well. So we can start using the Squatters now. That will be kind of cool, actually. There we see a Snow-Covered Swamp by Xander. Remember, Xander is on five. He can prevent the damage from the Black Sources. He has to do that. And now we can see Orcish Squatters in action. It can steal one of the lands here. Oh, look at that taking over the swamp. This is such a cool moment. It's just great to see Orcish Squatters here in action. And that's it. That's the game. And that's the win for Baron Nick. Moving on with his black and red land destruction deck. Lashrax Conquest. Congratulations, Baron, for winning this one and moving on to the final four of the Ice Age Constructor Tournament, Winter's Here. And here we see the deck of the winner, Baron Nick, and what a fun match it was. I just, I loved seeing Jester's Cap in action. I mean, that's been a long time since I've seen that card being played. So really, really cool stuff, at least for me personally. Let me know what you think, by the way, of these Ice Age matches. I would love to hear from you. Um, talking about all that stuff, uh, if you want to support the channel, there are three very simple things you can do. That's liking this video, leaving a comment, and sharing it on your socials. All those things are free and really help the channel move forward. And before you go, go, I would just like to show you the match that we have for you next week, Tuesday, because then we are going to dive into the semifinals and then we're going to see Baron Nick's deck in action again. So Black and Red Lash Rex Conquest. And he's taking on a red and green deck that is called Mutant Squatter. And I mean, this is just a super cool deck. Again, we've got the land destruction theme that Baron has as well, but he is playing with Goblin Mutant and Orcish Squatters in the same deck. And I just, I think that's hysterical. Um, it's a deck piloted and designed by Tom Atwood. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to see this deck in action. Goblin Mutant, I think it's a super cool card. Um, so yeah, I can't, I can't wait to see that hit the board and, and, and see what it can do. I think it's going to be a very, very close match between these two decks. Now, before you go, one last thing that I'd like to show you, and that is the Timmy Talks Patreon page, because we do have a Patreon. And uh, because of the Patreon, you can support Timmy Talks. Well, if you want to, of course, it's an option. It already starts with $1 and there are a couple of perks. One of the perks is that you can join these Timmy Talks tournaments. I organize them. Uh, to thank my channel members, to thank my sponsors, and of course to thank my patrons for the support that they give me. So when you're a patron, a channel member, or a sponsor of the show, you can actually take part in these uh, tournaments. So if, if you like what you see, you can consider uh, visiting the Timmy Talks Patreon page. There's probably an info card popping up right now. When you click on that card, that will take you straight to the Timmy Talks Patreon page, and you can read all about it, like the perks, and uh, you can ch choose on what tier you want to become a member. Like I said, it already starts with $1 a month. And one of the perks is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. As a matter of fact, let's go to the end scroll right now and take a look at all the fantastic, wunderbar, amazing patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Somebody can see.